Hello my soccer universe and yeah here's my smiley face. The previous one was a little bit more doomy gloomy but before that Lusk missing a penalty on the same day Milan played and made me happy with a performance that wasted little energies and still we got an, an injury but yeah wearing a Milan away jersey this is from 96, 9, 97 the first season in the 90s where Milan was really 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 bad but they had a really really nice jersey and they won the Scudetto in a similar one but there was the crest here which on this one is out here so yeah headlines the top three move step by move in lockstep all of them picking up wins and it becomes more and more potentially a three-way race let's see Roma Losing to Atalanta, getting Atalanta a little bit back into business and Lazio also losing. So uh, quite an interesting round and lots of changes in the midfield. So I would say we go and look at the games. As I said, I saw Milan, I saw a little bit of highlights and so on, but I didn't follow this week. Serie A all that close, but uh, I think I have a good... Uh, bearing on the other four to five games so uh fiorentina hellas is an interesting one one result again fiorentina does not get a win uh Sampdoria, however gets uh finally a win again three one against crotone and you know uh, relieves Sampdoria a little bit of trouble and as i pointed out last time we had for the longest of time fiorentina in the eighth spot here now we have Sampdoria there um so uh, also te also telling you that the uh, trouble of Fiorentina is in and that Sampdoria is actually rising a little bit up towards midfield. Parma against Juve was not much of a contest. Uh, I expected a little bit more. I did not expect Juve to show up in orange, but it kind of made a little bit sense because if they would play in their dark blue jerseys, I think this would have cost a bit more, how to say, <laughs> a bit more trouble with uh, differentiating, those, differentiating those two teams. But yeah, uh, Kulusevski in the 23rd and then Ronaldo with a typical header, both assisted by Morata, uh, get Juve well on track. Ronaldo in the 48th adds a third. And very late on, uh, Morata another one. I thought there was also, also a goal by uh, De Licht. That tells you how close he was following the game once. It was 2 or 3 nil. Uh, but don't see it at this moment. So yeah, you were rather easy 4-0 win against a team that Milan dropped points at uh, before, but I also, it has to be said, Milan has injuries, which we'll talk about that. Then uh, early Bologna and Torino 1-1, one, one, like a result that doesn't really help either one of them. Benevento gets the win over Genoa, which puts Genoa in trouble, as we'll see. Uh, Cagliari Udine, also one of those results that really doesn't help anyone uh, a lot to move uh, out of trouble or, you know, get into a better position. I didn't have high hopes for Inter dropping points against Spezia, although I know that Spezia does have kind of this positive outlook uh, playing, but not against Inter. Oh. And unfortunately, I, I, I was right. I mean, Hakim in the second half with a really, really nice shot and then a penalty by Lukaku. Basically settled that game. Yes, Spezia scored a goal through Piccoli, but it was way too late at the time. I'm actually not that unhappy that uh, this goal happened because... Um, it kept kind of really lockstep between Inter and Milan, although goal difference in Italy also doesn't mean much. Speaking of Milan, um, that game I watched very, very with high in interest and fortunately I sat down and I watched it from the beginning because right off the kickoff, Brian Diaz plays the kickoff to Cialanoglu who makes a few steps, plays a pass forward to uh, Leao who runs into, into the box and shoots. Goal not even seven seconds on the clock. This turns out to be is the fastest clock in any of Europe's top five leagues since recording began. Um, and I was thinking, yeah, this might be the fastest. I mean, I know I've heard of five second goals or blah, 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 but they are usually directly from the kickoff. This is really, uh, uh, this was an active play. I think it's the fastest thing that you can have active play going forward. And Sassuolo was completely caught, um, caught, caught, caught out there. Um, I have to say, not only Milan had some suspension and uh, injury trouble, also Sassuolo, they, I think they play with a new defense and with um, Locatelli out also did not quite help. 
But I have to say, I mean, my first thought is, yeah, let's finish the game. I want to get the three points and get home without any other injuries what, whatsoever. But Milan actually kept it, you know, really uh, with a super young team. I think not, not even 20, 20, 23 years of average age. Jalanoglu was the oldest one with just 20, 26 years. It's just amazing, I have to, have to say. And... You know, you know, just uh, stifling a little bit, so, so, so let, let him come and hitting them on the car contract. Another one of these, uh, Leo got the ball out right and played back to Shalanogli, who puts in the net in the ninth minute. Unfortunately, it was caught, called off for an offside because the kick off Salemakers was just over the halfway line, a little bit offside. Uh, it was that tight, but yeah. Uh, that did that didn't count, and uh, just when you thought Sassuolo might come back, another count can with Theo Hernandez. He plays the ball forward, unfortunately, Tonali, then who was clearly offside, steps back, lets Hernandez run through, and suddenly it's three against one in the box. Hernandez runs, 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 plays to Salamakers 2 0, 26 minute game done and dusted. Um, there were a few minor Sassuolo chances, but I have had to say overall Milan really had control um, by seizing the ball to the opposition. I really thought this was a smart thing to do, kind of conserve a little bit your energies. Unfortunately, I have to say that um, Tonali injured himself and so Radek Runic. He needed to come on at halftime. Hauge also came on a little bit later, which I actually like. And then uh, the big one. And I thought he already got the guard one against Genoa, but he didn't. Kessi now picked up his yellow card and now he's suspended for the next game against Lazio. And I'm getting a little bit worried because Benazer out, you have um, Kessi out and potentially Tonali also out. Not uh, looking forward to that. But yeah. Uh, I think there was one decent chance by Sassuolo, but then there was nothing really calm coming. And Hauke, if he was a little bit more clever, he could have made a third goal and really uh, put the game to bed. Then it was a free kick and Hauke steps out of the wall and deflects flag, in. I think Don Donnarumma was upset, absolutely right to be upset there. Uh, and it's 1-2 in the 89th. And then, you know, that there are three minutes put up on, on, on the clock, but there's an injury here, there's an in, in, injury, the whole, whole thing went on for seven minutes. I mean, I, I was complaining bas basketball, that's the reason why I don't like basketball, because the last two, two minutes can be stretched out over 15 minutes or some, something with all the foul throws and whatever. Um, say This felt similarly, but fortunately there was not really a big chance coming and Milan very, very calm and collected played this home. Very mature performance by a really, really young team. I have to say I was quite impressed. They are important three points uh, given that the others won too. And then Atalanta Roma. Uh, yes, there was the last game, game one, and then I saw also the second half of Wolfsburg, so I had it on the second screen. But what I could see is that Roma came out storming, and Jaco in the third minute after Mikitarian assist already made it 1 0 for Roma. And then I think it was, um, uh, what's his name? Spinazzola, who from far out lobs it and he just hits the post. So it could have been 2 0 Roma, and the Roma being for the first 30, 30 minutes definitely the better team. Then Atalanta came up, had a few chances, but uh, it was then some changes that um, Gasperini, who, no Papu Gomez, uh, who did it that, and that really changed the game, namely bringing on Ilicic for, pa, um, for Pessina and also Palomino for Romero. So Bata in the 59th gives it the equalizer, then, and then all the flood gets open because uh, Gossens, after Ilicic cross, can make it in the 70th 2-1, uh, and Muriel with a great feint. I mean, you think he's going with the ball to the right, goalkeeper thinks so too, he goes to the left and has the empty goal. So 3-1 in the 72nd, and Ilicic then uh, crowns his uh, performance. He assisted uh, the first two goals. Uh, turns it around and Atalanta is a 4-1 winner over Roma uh, in, uh, you know, that's a rivalry game uh, for uh, the Atalanta and the Roma fans, so uh, quite kind of, kind of big win, also big win kind of announcing Atalanta going back. I thought the jersey matchup was rather poor because I did not like these uh, pajama, like a, a practice jersey, uh, like looking uh, jerseys by Atalanta. Uh, in grey, yes, they had the Christmas tree around the crest. Those are the Christmas jerseys they were wearing them against Milan as well. They, whenever they have that, they 
score a lot of goals against a big opponent. Uh, so yeah, I have had to say I like those a lot less than the green ones, and I've already thought that the green ones were kind of a little bit um, weird looking. And then Napoli, with having next to no players <laughs> in the up front, I mean in and Mertens out, uh, having really trouble at Immobile, uh, first misses a chance and in ninth already makes it 1-0. Napoli not showing much and Luis Alberto and with a wonderfully played attack uh, after the Immobile assist with the 56 makes it 2-0. Basically putting the uh, game to rest. I think uh, Irving Lozano also injured himself so the news are not getting better for um, Gattuso and Napoli. So with all that, we have now the following standings. As I said, the top six did not change. Atalanta moves now ahead of Lazio, uh, thanks to goal difference. They always were a big on goal difference. And they also have a game in hand. Um, Hellas also dropping a little bit. Uh, as I said, Sampdoria moving up. And then if you look at this big midfield, um, there it's rather tight, although there's a little bit of a break after Bologna. I mean, Hellas, I think, can still go for the upper points and then every, every, everything below might get into the relegation trial, but not really, because I think the bottom three there is rather distinct already, and Torino and Genoa in there, that's, especially Torino, is a big surprise for me, and Fiorentina has to be careful to not get implicated there. So if you look at the uh, chances there on the bottom, Genoa and Crotone seem to be Already odds on fair favorites in Torino not looking good at all, and this, this is absolute shame. Now on the top, we also see now that uh, Inter, as they were last week, are the favorites. Uh, Juve slightly ahead of Milan, uh, which I probably would sign at this moment, and similar for the Champions League. Uh, Roma and Napoli, and potentially Atalanta, because if Atalanta win that one game, they are level uh, with Roma then uh, they can, would fight for the last spot in the Champions League. Uh, so yeah, rather interesting situation there as well. Uh, if we adjust here, then nothing really changes. It's just Atalanta gets a little bit closer to Sassuolo. But as I said, if they win that game against Udine, they are right up there. We have another round coming up um, Tuesday and Wednesday, so just before Christmas. And I think there are two Actually, three matches, but you know, the Juve Fiorentina that's a huge rivalry. But more for Fiorentina than for Juve Fiorentina is a no contest at the moment. Uh, let's see what Chiesa will do against his former team. Uh, Hellas against Inter that's a trap game, I think, for Inter because Hellas can really cause some trouble. Uh, Milan Lazio is, of course, the big name matchup. Um, other than that, uh, we have Roma against Cagliari. Uh, I think Cagliari caused some trouble to Roma last season, uh, and Bologna Atalanta might be in Napoli Torino. You know, there's a lot of stuff on Wednesday. I think Tuesday it's really you with Fiorentina and everything else. Uh, we have a big game between Spezia and Genoa where if Spezia wins that one they will look rather good staying up. So yeah, that was the action from Serie A from the past weekend. We have one more round before Christmas. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a line below if you want to add a few more things uh, that I missed saying in this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye.